Hi! How did we end up being in September already? It uh, feels like summer just never really arrived here. Today is sunny though and it's actually quite pleasant and warm. And finally my tomatoes are starting to ripen properly. I have managed to keep the blight down here. I haven't had any blighted leaves in the last two weeks. Obviously I have to keep an eye on it if we get more wet humid weather again then it is likely to uh, appear once again but I feel like I can keep on con on top of it here the key is to check every day and that is I guess where a lot of people may might have uh, trouble if you can't get to your allotment that often however we are here today to talk about seeds so September is sort of the last last time to sow some seeds really <laughs> this year I know I know that seed packet says that you can sow seeds I know carrots for example some some carrots you can sow all the way up until November but I tried it it is no point um, and the reason why is because the light the daylight hours are reducing now very very rapidly so for seeds to sow now to harvest for you during autumn and winter they need to grow large enough before the light levels reduce too much okay so a plant especially the hardy ones are not that sensitive to the temperature per se obviously things kind of slow down if it's um a minus six right but if it's 10 or if it's 5 degrees it might not matter so much for brassicas for example what slows them down in winter is the lack of light so yes you can sow uh, you can sow seeds in October and they will germinate they will grow but they won't really get to harvesting until spring and maybe even at the same time as your spring sown so there really is no point. You'd have to nurture these plants all through winter for no actual gain in spring. So while you can sow seeds at many times during the year, there are mm, times where our, the sowing is more appropriate than others. And that's sort of key to understanding how you reduce uh, excess work in the garden for yourself by sowing at the right time, partly for growth from sowing to harvest but also in terms of pests you want to avoid the, the 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 big pest period for those specific vegetables and also in terms of bolting you want to avoid uh, growing things when it's just highly likely that they're going to bolt unless unless you really 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 love that vegetable right so for example for me florence fennel i love so i always try to grow it in spring but this year was really bad because it was so dry so I think um, about 80% of them bolted which means rise to flower rather than swell up into a bulb, a bulb fennel while sowing in summer and they're growing fine now I'm, you know, I'm gonna have nice bulb fennel to harvest this autumn, right? but I still try in spring because I love it so, so you, 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 but you should be aware of why you're doing it so seeds for September are uh, exactly the same almost as the sowed seeds for sowing in August right but it's just that now it's the last time so there's a there's a slight difference though if you're gonna grow them outside uncovered in your beds or if you're gonna grow them in a greenhouse or poly, poly, polytunnel or a cold frame or even uh, in a zippy, you know, or one of them cloches that you can buy covered in plastic, right? So you can grow uh, quite a lot of things like lettuces and greens. So what we're talking about mainly here now are greens, right? They, they can grow, uh, certain varieties grow really well through winter, uh, autumn and winter, right? And these include things like uh, landcress, claytonia, rocket, spinach, um, lamb's lettuce. These are greens that will bolt very quickly if you try to grow them in spring. Mitsuna is one another one, right? And they will grow outside too. 
but they will be pristine. <laughs> the leaves will be pristine if you grow them in a greenhouse or uh, covered in a protected somehow, right? Because they won't be exposed to uh, the battering of the wind, the rain, the hail, uh, the snow, whatever. So by growing them in the greenhouse, they'll be uh, equally cold, right? But they will have some protection from the elements, which means that the leaves will be much nicer. So if you can, I would recommend that you grow greens for your your winter salads under cover. This also includes lettuces, but the difference is there that whilst you can grow most lettuces, I've tried most of them uh, in a greenhouse and they do fine. Outside, mo mainly the the ones that are are specifically for winter growing is what I would recommend and they have like names like uh, Jack Frost and other wintry names right so there are varieties of lettuce that you can grow outside during winter that will do fine uh, I think uh, Lolo Rosso is another one that does well outside but in a greenhouse you can get away with growing your romains and uh, also butterheads they won't grow much right so that's the thing but th what it comes down to now is timing right so i would get all these seeds sown in the first two weeks of september so i'm based in oxford so if you're further south than me uh, in terms of light levels you know you get a slightly slower changeover in the the in the <laughs> going into winter right but if you're further north than me you really need to do it as soon as possible now to have a chance to get them big enough to crop for you in uh, autumn and winter. So one interesting fact about growing lettuces and greens through winter is thinking about number of plants, right? Because they are growing so slow and there are like a period over the, in the darkest months, two weeks or so, where there's no growth almost, it will mean that you might need more plants. Well. I know it means you will need more plants if you want to have the same supply of lettuce as you would in the rest of the year. Specifically in the summer, you don't they grow like crazy, so you, you, you don't need many plants to get quite a lot of lettuce, right? Especially if you're picking the leaves. If you're growing lettuce for heads, if that's the way you grow your lettuce, it's a little bit trickier in winter. It's not really something I would recommend myself because it's just such a long wait until they form those close heads. So it's much easier to grow for picking the leaves around the stem of the plant and it will keep producing new ones. However, you should bear in mind that, you know, look at your own preferences. How much lettuce do you eat in winter? Maybe you don't eat as much as you think or maybe you eat less. A lot of people say lettuce is a summer vegetable, uh, so think about that. But at the same time, the lettuces that you grow, the greens that you grow in winter are a different flavor. You know, you get the pepperiness and the rocket and um, and in the cress, you know, and then you get the succulent leaves of the lamb's lettuce and the claytonia. And then you get the really, really sweet leaves of spinach because they respond well to the, the colder temperatures, you know. So it is a, it is worth growing them just because it tastes so different to the rest of the year. In my opinion anyway. <laughs> uh, you can also grow oriental greens like pak choy, tatoi, all of these uh, beautiful greens for that are for cooking and again I would say uh, they need to be sown ASAP if you want to grow them outside and they would do much better being grown under cover. So oriental greens and this, this includes Mitsuna and Rocket as well are part of the brassica family so flea beetle love them right they love to make those little holes in the leaves so if you grow them outside i would definitely recommend growing them under mesh and i even had the flea beetles inside my greenhouse last year so they were uh, <laughs> they were helping themselves right so it's something that i kind of just come to accept i'm fine with it it doesn't produce the the the, the perfect leaves maybe that you buy in the shop but that's fine by me it didn't they didn't need all the the greens in the greenhouse for some reason they just stayed in one corner so you know that was that was fine by me the mesh on the outside crop will protect them from the flea beetle uh, and growing under mesh will also give some protection against the elements 
So if you don't have an undercover uh, cropping, I would use mesh or fleece if that's, uh, if that's all you have. Mesh will give more warmth, but it's not necessarily what the plants need. They just need wind protection, really. So mesh will do fine and mesh is stronger so is more likely to, to be survive any winter storms and you want to keep your mesh nice and whole and in good nick for spring when your spring plants definitely need the warmth right so the winter winter plants things that we are growing now can grow through quite low temperatures but they want some protection so moving on to flowers. So there are quite a lot of flowers that are sown now. For example, I spoke about them in my August sowing. Cyclamen, for example, you know, are sown now. August, September, and I'm gonna... I, I wait until September because it is tricky for me to keep seedlings cool because I have just have full full sun I have no shade to keep seedlings in so I thought I'll wait until September because they, these would definitely suffer but being in full sun when they're really small um, and now September October is the time to sow quite a lot of annuals for next year if you want to have a head start so I'm not the expert on this but have you heard of Swan Cottage Flowers on Instagram or their website so they have just released a a downloadable guide on how to get started with certain seeds that they think from their experience works well sowing now so I would check that out I bought the the guide and I found it really really useful had lots of good tips and information in there and also their Instagram um, lots of stories on how to do things so if you're into growing flowers and you feel <laughs> out of your comfort zone like me, they're a good account to follow, Swan Cottage Flowers. And um, I don't know if they have a YouTube. They might have a YouTube. Maybe I'll look into that. So if this is the kind of content that really is useful for you on you know, what to sow when and you like the way I do it, if you sign up to my mailing list, you are able to get a free download of my sewing plan that I've created. Uh, so this is covers the whole year and you get it in an easily readable format for you on your phone when you're out or if you, you can print it if you want. Um, so if that's something that you want to get your hands on, sign up to my mailing list and I have that, I'll have that sent out to you, okay? So I wanted to talk to you about a very exciting new venture that I have started. I have set up a veg growing membership called The Veg Plotters. It's currently in its founding members phase, meaning that I take on members now before it's fully built for a disc heavily discounted price so that we can build it together. It will be launched officially in spring in, in 2022 for um, a full price. I think it will be around £24, but I'm taking on founding members now for £14 a month. And the good thing about that is that you stay on 14 pounds for the duration of your membership. So if you wanna get in and working closer with me, learning more closely from me, now is the time, right? So I'll put the link for all of that below this video. It really came about because I <laughs> wanted a close community where I could just talk veg at people all the time because none of my friends are into veg growing and yes there's social media but it isn't really that it is a little bit saturated and it's a little bit a lot of a lot of overwhelming and misleading and conflicting advice out there and if you follow me on here you are a fan of what I do how I grow so I would consider joining my membership for a more one-to-one -one experience so let me talk you through what it will I envision it will entail obviously if you join as a founding member you can have a say in what it will be but I'm thinking it will be video content where it is searchable right so you know how you remember someone saying something about uh, planting distances for kohlrabi and you're like where where was that and then you like try to find the video and then when you're in the video you try to find where in the video it was mentioned right so i'm using a platform called searchy where you can 
uh, f easily search and it will find exactly in what video and what time points timestamp that is so you can easily find all the information that you need and it will be on a monthly basis there will be like a master class with me during you know how to how to grow one specific vegetables or maybe a collection of vegetables that is relevant for that month uh, there will be more maybe intense learning on specific topics like on top of my head um, composting or preserving food with in invited speakers because that's not my forte and then there'll be a, a private Facebook group which is already active with members talking about how they're growing vegetables and what their experience have been this year and that's a place where you can ask questions and you'll be able to communicate closely with me and with the group and we can together come up with a solution or we can share our ups and downs and really really get nerdy with the vegetables right and then there'll also be live q a calls over zoom where we can have you can ask me questions directly or if you can't join them live you can send them into for me uh, beforehand and i can address them in the video and, you know it'll be a much much more intimate situation it won't affect my free content on youtube or on instagram at all it'll be you know that will stay the same but if you want a more close working relationship with me this is the way to do it i'm i have grand plans right for this membership to include learning things that i don't know you know that would be great for me as well to really get into this whole uh how to preserve your harvests because that's something that I struggle with how to cook your harvest get new ideas for cooking and even maybe go beyond that and and organize travel to visit different gardens and meet up with people uh, you know might include a stay and a meal or you know <laughs> big invited speakers you know discounts it could be lots and lots and lots of things however it all sort of depends how big it gets and how much power we have as a group. But I'm hoping that these are things that we can do in the future. So you can email me if you have any questions. My email is in the description below. Or you can, if you're sold already, you can join me as a founding member by clicking the link for the Veg Plotters. The founding members cart will only be open until beginning of next week when I will close it for this price and then it will open again in spring for the full price so if you want to get in early now's the time and through the quiet quieter time of autumn and winter we'll plan for next year and really hit the ground running so i hope to see you there and i'm really really grateful for you to listening for listening to me today talking about this right so yes i will see you next week and have a great one